Well, on March 12th, 2020, Matthew West was in the middle of a sound check when his concert was shut down due to COVID. He grabbed an Uber ride to return to his hotel room and the song playing in the car was The God Who Stays, one of his songs, and that became a pivotal moment for Matthew. Singer, songwriter, and author Matthew West has been highly awarded in Christian music for more than 20 years. During these unprecedented times, with COVID-19, inflation, and a host of other issues facing us, it's easy to allow fear and doubt to take over. In his new book, The God Who Stays, Matthew encourages us that no matter what we're going through, God will never leave. You're the one who runs in my direction when the whole all right, well, please welcome back to the 700 Club, Matthew West. Matthew, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Man, um, it's already been good to be here. I, before I even came on the air, I was just praying along with your hosts and just, uh, man, I just love the way that you pray for your viewers. And so thanks for having me. It's great to be with you again. Of course, of course. All right, well, let's return back to March 20. I'm sorry, March 12th of 2020. What happened to you sitting in the back of an Uber of all places? Well, for most people, if we said, let's return back to March of 2020, we'd say, no, please, I can't go back there. Um, but as, as often as the case, we can find some beautiful gifts, some beautiful blessings, even in the middle of some of the fiercest battles that we face. And these last couple of years have been a process of, as I was writing this book, The God Who Stays, unpacking the powerful blessings and lessons that God was teaching me through a difficult time. But I, I was panicking because the whole country was shutting down. We were in Trenton, New Jersey, which was one of the first cities to close down. And so I booked a flight out of the Philadelphia airport, which was an hour away. And I get in the back of this Uber car and nobody wants to be in an Uber for more than 15 minutes, let alone an hour. But that's how much I was panicking. I had to get home and I'm in the back seat, just kind of freaking out. I've got to wear a mask for the first time. I'm getting on an airplane. Everybody's getting sick. What's happening? And lo and behold, the, the Uber driver was listening to a Christian radio station. And all of a sudden I'm singing back to me, you're the God who stays. But that wasn't it. The, the Uber driver was singing every word of my song by heart. He knew the song and he was from a third world country. So when he sang it, it sounded like broken English, but it was so beautiful. And so for the rest of my drive to the uh, airport, I forgot about the things that were happening outside of that Uber. And instead I talked to Arthur and he told me why he loved that song. And he said, I've been through many hard things, but when I sing that song, it's reminded me that God has been with me every step of the way. And I thought, isn't it just like God to get my attention in the backseat of an Uber and actually use my own song that he inspired me to write to remind me and prepare me that in the weeks, months, and years ahead, when we're gonna be dominated by isolation, separation, social distancing, that I could still experience a spiritual closeness to my savior in the midst of all of that. And that has sustained me. And that's what inspired me to write this book for somebody else out there who needs to be reminded about the life-changing presence of God in their lives. Amen, that is such an amazing story. That really is. Well, the pandemic you know, pretty, yeah, the pandemic. You know what's funny? I never told him it was me either. He never, I sang with him and he never recognized me. So if he's out there listening today, Arthur, thank you for inspiring this book. <laughs> That's so cool. That's so cool. I love that. Well, the pandemic pretty much shut down your career, Matthew, but you were resilient. You did a lot of really cool things, new things um, like on Instagram Live and all that stuff. Tell us more about that. Well, you know, I, I found that one of the greatest ways to stave off and avoid your own discouragement is to be focused on encouraging other people. And so, I mean, we heard the word pivot so many times and in the life of a musician, we had to get creative during the pandemic. And so I joke with people that, you know, I went into survival mode and for me, that was work mode. I wrote 20 new songs. I finished this book, The God Who Stays. I started selling steak knives. I'm just kidding about that part. But, you know, it was really about just in stepping into people's lives and we talk about the downside of technology so much and the negatives but we were actually able to use technology and social media to essentially invite people who were isolated and lonely into the west house 
And I, it was such a special time. My father is a very important part of my life, and I write about him in the book, The God Who Stays. He's a pastor for 38 years, so I'm a preacher's kid, and, uh, and uh, I'm still in recovery for that. No, I'm just kidding. But um, just I was able to encourage people, and my dad's always had a heart for people. And uh, so we would go online and have special devotions and just pray for people, just like your host prayed for your viewers. And we believe that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful, and effective. And my prayer is that when people read this book, The God Who Stays, that wherever they are in their lives, that they're going to be reminded that they are not going through it alone. Yeah. Amen to that. Well, your family began actually walking together during the pandemic. What did you learn from spending that uninterrupted time together? Well, gosh, I mean, we were trying to keep our sanity, right? I mean, there was that season when every restaurant was closed, every store was closed. If you got a package from Amazon, leave it on your front porch and let it air out, right? It got weird. And so we would, I instituted mandatory family walks. And uh, of course, with my daughters, that went over like a lead balloon. But I said, you're going to go on a walk and you're going to like it. And you know what I discovered? Um, and I, I wound up writing about this in the book. In Genesis, it says, God went looking for Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. And um, a, a lot of experts believe that like God walked or sought to walk daily with Adam and Eve in the garden. And I thought about like how many times has God been looking to walk with me and I like Adam and Eve have denied that invitation or hidden from the invitation. Sometimes like my daughters would do when I would go looking for them to go for a walk with me. But then I thought about who is it that we go for walks with? I go for walks with people that I like, that I wanna engage in conversation. And that was one of the biggest messages that I felt God showing me in the writing of this book. This is, I mean, this is gonna blow your mind, probably not, but it blew my mind. God doesn't just love me, get this, he likes me. Yeah. He wants to spend time with me. He wants me to walk with him and talk with him. And somewhere along the way, if I'm being honest with your viewers today, this Christian, this preacher's kid, this person who spent his whole life talking about Jesus through songs and books and podcasts, maybe forgot the message of the songs that I was singing and the books that I was writing. And that simple but life-changing reminder, my God likes me and he wants to spend time with me. And man, when you realize he's by your side and desires to spend time with you, that's the message of the gospel. It's the message of God's pursuit of us. And it's a relentless pursuit at that. Amen to that. And hey, you are not the only one. We all forget it sometimes and we need to be reminded, that's for sure. Well, in your book, you also talk about blue couch moments. Where did that term even come from and what exactly does it mean? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. And I, I saw myself starting to smile as you asked because one of my favorite things to talk about, I was a 13 year old preacher's kid who figured I'd get to heaven because I was in the family business. And, and I remember a profound moment sitting on a blue couch in, my, in the basement of my childhood home in Downers Grove, Illinois. And my mom loved this blue couch and now she'll always love it for a bigger reason. But as a 13 year old kid, I turned on the TV after school one day and I stumbled across an old rerun of a Billy Graham crusade. And that wound up becoming a profound moment in my life as the choir sang, Just As I Am. Billy Graham was reading John 3, 16. He called it the gospel in a nutshell. And I had heard it a thousand times. I could quote it by heart. But in that moment, I don't know how else to describe it, but when, instead of hearing, for God so loved the world, I felt like for the first time I heard, for God so loved Matthew West. And I remember my mom sat down next to me. She was doing laundry and she asked me, if I wanted to pray. And I remember thinking, how did she know? Well, that's because she's a woman of God and a prayer warrior. And she's always prayed for her son to come to a personal relationship with Christ. And so that was my blue couch moment where I asked Jesus Christ to be my personal Lord and savior. Now I have a podcast and on the Matthew West podcast, every guest that I have, whether it's Tim Tebow or, or, or whoever else, right? Um, name dropped. But um, I ask them, what's your blue couch story? because I love it when people share about the hour they first believed. And it brings me back to that reminder. And throughout this book, I talk about the blue couch and how some days I feel a million miles away from that kid on the blue couch. But God reminds me that he didn't stay on the blue couch when I got up and left, that he is the God who pursues, 
the God who stays, the God who leaves the 99 to find the one. And so I guess one of the biggest lessons I learned in this book is that God's desire for us is not just to have a one-time blue couch moment, but it's moment by moment, hour by hour, day by day, like the old hymn I sang at my grandma's funeral, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And that's really the heartbeat of this book, a God who walks with us and talks with us. Wow, uh, you are preaching, Matthew. You are preaching, and it's touching me, and I know it's touching so many of our viewers. Matthew's new book is called The God Who Stays, and it's available wherever books are sold. Matthew West, thank you so much for being with us today. It's always a pleasure to have you. Oh, it's an honor. Thank you guys so much. And I look forward to talking with you again soon. Yes. God bless you.